Hey there, it's Noah with Competitive Cyclist, and we are here with Craig Lewis of HTC Columbia Interbike, and we're just going to ask him a couple of questions. All right, Craig, it's good to see you. How you doing? Doing good, doing good. How long have you been in town here? I got in Monday afternoon, and I'm here till Saturday, so long week in Vegas. <laughs> It'll take it out of you. Uh, what have you got going, going after Vegas? Uh, Saturday I'm heading off to Australia for World Championships and um, I'll be there a week and then that, following that I'm heading to Italy for the fall races and then um, that's it, season over. All right. So about what time is the, the campaign over for the year? Uh, the 17th or 16th of October is the final race, but then you still have training camps coming up after that and so on, so it never really ends. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, tell me this. Maybe, maybe everybody doesn't know. You're pretty young, right? How old are you? 25. 25. Okay, so you ride for HCC Columbia, one of the best teams in the world, unarguably. And from what I understand, you didn't really spend that much time on the traditional NRC circuit here in the U.S. You know, coming up. So, what what did you do? You know, how did it how did it pan out? How many years were you here? What races and How'd you make that leap, what seems to be so quickly? Uh, I really just got set up with a team, which is now Garmin, that had international aspirations early on. And uh, so we didn't really focus on the NRC event so much. Um, I did Redlands my first year when I was 18 or 19. And then from there, I did the Tour of Georgia, and then we did small trips in Europe. And at the same time, I was racing with a national team in Europe. So focus was always on Europe for obvious reasons. They have bigger events. and, and uh, Better, better Peloton in general. So, uh, you know, I was fortunate in that way and, and learned a lot from those experiences. And uh, But I did miss out on a lot of great racing in the U.S. Well, that's awesome. That's awesome. So, we talk a lot of bikes here. You can talk that all day long. I'm sure you do. Let's kind of steer away from it. Uh, what other stuff are you into? I, I've heard you are quite the connoisseur of wine. Is that is that a true statement, fair statement? I do enjoy a nice glass of wine. Um, wine and food in general, I love to cook. I love being home and, and cooking for my family as much as I can. It's just a nice nice release and something different from working. So how did you how did you get into wine? I mean, was it a certain was it living in a certain area? Was it a region? Was it a particular person? I mean, what what got you hooked? Uh, mainly just traveling all, all over Europe is such uh, ingrained in their culture, and you know we race through vineyards and all year long, and you just it's hard not to take notice of of this and all the beautiful areas they're in. So just trying different uh, different wines at, at restaurants or whatever whenever we're at races. It just sparked an interest, and from there, I just I just took it and ran with it, and I enjoy it. So I'm I'm very naive to wine, as you can see here. But I like my hops, <laughs> my yeast. Um, in in uh in 60 seconds or less, I want you to teach me as much as you know in 60 seconds about wine and what I need to look for and what I need to what I need to taste. Uh, wine and beer. I mean, both really similar. They both come from the ground. Uh, you you're. You like the smell of wine, you like the smell of beer, it's, it's important to uh, just to make sure you smell, you know, fruit or you don't want it to smell funky or anything because that's a bad bottle. Um, and just, you know, once you sip it, you just see what you're tasting, like you should taste, it should taste like where it's coming from. That's the cool thing about wine is you can open a bottle from Argentina and you may have never been to Argentina, but you're tasting, you're taste, tasting Argentina. And, uh, same with the same with anything all over the world. Um, yeah, what else? So just just try it. Keep trying. <laughs> so you, I mean, it, I don't know it's kind of intimidating. I see the guys swirling the glasses and they raise it in the air and they keep it in their mouth and they suck in it. I mean, do you want, is, is all that necessary or is that kind of? Uh, it's a little fluff. I mean, you can make it as complicated as you want. Um, swirling the wine glass is just to uh, bring oxygen in so you can smell it better. Um, other than that. I mean, if you have a good glass of wine, you just need to let it sit and enjoy it. <laughs> What's the best bottle you've ever had? Best bottle? It's impossible to tell you. I love California cabs and, and Italian Barolos and Brunellos and, and a few French French wines, but um, it's, it's hard to pick one. Gotcha, gotcha. So what other, I mean, you're into, uh, let me see, I did a little poking around. I hear watches. You, you like a nice watch? Yeah. Uh, what do you have on right now? Uh, I have a Rolex on. I used to like watches, then I got married and I don't have watches anymore. So. <laughs> that money goes elsewhere, huh? <laughs> Money's going elsewhere. 
<laughs> That's awesome. Well, what else you got to say? Anything? Anything to tell us about the coming years or about, I don't know, anything cool? Anything uh, unknown secrets? Not much. I mean, it's great to be at Interbike and seeing how, how big the sport is and uh, all the cool directions it's heading in. Um, lots, of, lots of cool things to come, and I'm excited about it. All right. Craig, thanks a lot. Yeah, thanks.